Yes, my dudes. I'm Alex, and thanks for checking out another video. I've got some Marcus Gilmore for you today, mate, and I'm still working on this one myself. I swear, the amount of coordination that that dude has got is absolutely next level, and everything that I've heard him play on is super hard to play, but also really tasteful and musical. The tune we're going to look at is Galang by VJ Liar Trio, and it's actually a cover of an MIA tune, so I'll put a link to the original song down in the description, as well as links to any other videos we talk about today, and a free PDF so you can grab the notation. We're going to look in particular at the live version. On the studio version, the concepts are the same, but of course, Marcus Gilmore's going to improvise it slightly different every time. So let's check out a video of the tune being played live, and then we'll see if we can break it down together. told you it was a banger mate. This one's super fun to play and I definitely recommend watch the whole live video, listen to the studio version just so you can hear all of Marcus Gilmore's different variations but what we're going to learn today will give you a starting point to jump off from. So this week instead of writing out a whole section of the track note for note what I've done is I've written it out with more of an exercise sheet kind of vibe so I've given you five different examples of different variations that Marcus Gilmore plays in the track. So number one on your sheet is the rhythmic framework. So what I've done is I've just stripped everything back to the basic rhythm that our groove is based around. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And you'll see on your notation that the orchestration I've written out is bass, snare, snare, bass, snare, snare, bass, snare, snare, bass, snare, bass together. And for the most part, this is accurate, but of course, when you get to the point where you're just improvising with this stuff, you can change up the voicings depending on the vibe that you're trying to go for. So let's have a listen to how it sounds on the kit and try and get this rhythm really embedded into your mind because it's going to make all of the other grooves 10 times easier to play. Cool, so as I mentioned, try and keep that groove in your head now as we go through the different variations. So number two on your sheet, I've just labeled the main groove. This seems to be the go-to groove and the one that Marcus Gilmore comes back to for the majority of the tune. Before we play the whole groove together, let's firstly just talk about what we're playing with our hands. So I'm gonna be playing my right stick up on the bell of the crash, left stick on the snare drum, and you're gonna be playing the rhythm, one and a, E and, three and a, E and. And the sticking you're gonna play is right, right together, right together, right, right together, right together. So you can see that we still got our bass drums from our rhythmic framework in our groove on beat one and beat three of the first bar, beat one, beat three, four and four and in the second bar. And we're just gonna chuck a couple of extra bass drums in there to give it a bit more of a syncopated feel. So. We're gonna add one in on the last 16th note of beat two and beat four in the first bar and just the last 16th note of beat two in the second bar. These extra notes lead nicely into bass drums played on the downbeats and it just helps to drive the groove forward. Now of course, Marcus Gilmore is an absolute master of independence and he improvises quite a lot with his hi-hat foot. But for these grooves, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our hi-hat foot firmly planted on the off beats. One and two and three and four and. Use this as a starting point and then feel free to improvise whatever madness you want to play with your hi-hat foot in any of the grooves we look at today. Now that's a lot of information but hopefully it'll make sense when you hear it all play together. I'm going to play it for you at half speed and then at full speed.
So that's a killer groove just as it is, but we're gonna make it a little bit harder, and in my opinion, a little bit sicker too. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna fill out any missing 16th note with a ghost note on the snare drum with our left hand. It could be a good idea just to work on the hand pattern first before adding in your feet, just because the coordination here is quite hard. Some little areas to watch out for are those control strokes, which is an accent followed by a ghost note, both played by the same stick. These can be tricky if you haven't tried them out before, but they're definitely worth the time put into them because they sound absolutely sick. Let's see if we can play it together, my dudes. Something else you can try with this groove, or any of them really, is to improvise around the idea and then see if you can really emphasize the hits at the end of the second bar. Three, a four, and one. This will help to really accent what the other instruments are playing in the track, giving the hits more impact and giving you some more ideas to improvise with. Such a good sounding groove, mate. And if you have a look on your sheet at example four, what you'll see is that this groove is played up on the hi-hat. And this is gonna be our variation for the B section of the track. So the rhythm for this variation is one E and a, E and, three E and a, E and. So on beats one and three, you're gonna play the sticking right, left, right, right, up on the hi-hat. And then you're gonna double up your right hand with a bass drum on the first and the last 16th note of the beat. On beats two and four, you're just gonna play the sticking right together E and, and you'll see that in the second bar, on the second half, I've left a space for a variation. Now, if you wanna play the track authentically, this isn't necessarily a place to play any mad chops or big fills. It's more just that I noticed that Marcus Gilmore didn't play it the same every time. So it's a bit of an opportunity to have a little play around with different phrasing and see what you can come up with. One last point before we play it, and it's more of a textural one. All we're gonna do is just open our hi-hat a little bit, just to give it a bit more wash, rather than all of our notes being staccato. Jump onto your kit and let's give it a go. Sick mate. And the last beat we're gonna look at from Galang today is a cheeky little tom variation that Marcus Gilmore whips out every now and again. So essentially, you're just gonna play the same groove that you played up on the bell of the crash, but move your right stick down to the high tom. And what you'll notice is that if you listen to the track, the sound of the toms is quite dead and quite low in the mix. So all I did is I swapped this 10 inch tom for a 12 inch and detuned it, muffled it down a bit in a way that to be honest would probably sound quite rubbish in any other setting, but for this tune, it sits quite nicely in the mix. So we've got the same bass drum pattern and again, we're playing our hi-hat foot on the off beats. And then we're just gonna add in some extra notes on the E of beat one and the E of beat three. So on the E of beat one, you're just gonna play a cheeky little double stroke on the snare drum with your left stick. You can play these as ghost notes and technically, they're gonna be played as two 30 second notes. Then on the E of beat three, you're just gonna play an open hi-hat with your left stick. So this is gonna give us the sticking right, left, left, right, together, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, together. And I've kept these variations consistent on your notation, but of course, Marcus Gilmore switches it up and improvises it on the fly. Once again, jump onto your kit and let's have a listen to how it sounds. Such a hard groove to play, man. Marcus Gilmore is actually unreal. But if you have got the grooves down, the last thing to do is to start to transition from one to the other and then play it with the tune. So what I'm gonna do is a quick play along with the track, just so you can hear how it all fits together. And although I will put the notation at the bottom so that you can see when I transition from one groove to the other, 
Bear in mind that I'm not playing this stuff note for note, but I'm more just trying to fit in with the vibe of the tune. Wish me luck, mate. This one's absolutely mental. Nice one, my dudes. I've been wanting to make a Marcus Gilmore episode for ages now, and I'm stoked that I finally did it. Let me know what you thought of the lesson, and keep me updated with how you're getting on with the grooves, because I always love to see your guys playing. And if you're digging the videos, hit the button to join the Wednesday crew, man, and feel free to leave a track recommendation for the Drumhub Jukebox playlist down in the comments below. I'll see you next week. <laughs>